Half in the bag. Whatever happened to Meg Ryan? Oh yeah, she died. Stick it in your slot? Your wet slot? Well, yes, that's what I intend to do. Except why is the slot wet? I'm just there to deliver my package. What? Oh, this is a sex phone line. I'm sorry, I thought I was calling the post office. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. You'll still have to charge me $2.99 per minute? All right, ma'am, <laughs> you have a nice day. Okay, thanks, bye. So Jay, how's your summer going? Oh, pretty good, but you know, I've been so busy here at work, I haven't had time to see too many movies. Hmm. Did you get a chance to see We're the Millers? No. What about the new hit animated Disney Pixar film that's wholly original called Planes? No. What about the new hit animated film that's wholly original called Smurfs 2? No. What about that new Matt LeBlanc film called Elysium? No. What about the new hit film Two Guns? No. No. What about Fast and the Furious Part 7? No. Oh, what about that new no. Leonardo DiCaprio film, The Great Gatsby? No. But you know what I did see? The Wolverine. You mean the first one? Wolverine X-Men Origins? No, no, they made a new one. It came out this summer. They made another one? They did. Oh, that's right. I just saw it. I've been trying to find you for over a year. It's an honor to meet the Wolverine. That's not who I am anymore. Wolverine, or The Wolverine, is the second attempt to make a movie just about Wolverine. Except for the first three X-Men movies. Oh, snap. Oh, no, you didn't. You ain't all that and a bag of potato chips. Wasn't there a critic that said that the first Wolverine movie was all that in a bag of potato chips? Now I could go on and on about this film because it was indeed all that in a bag of potato chips. In this movie, Logan travels to Japan to say goodbye to a Japanese man his character wouldn't care less about saying goodbye to. While he's there, he discovers some kind of sinister plot about something. Action happens, romance happens, there's fighting and shooting, and then all is resolved at the end when Wolverine throws a giant robot off a cliff. So Jay, what did you think about X-Men Origins, the Wolverine? Oh no, we'll get to that, to X-Men Origins. But Why, we happen to have a copy of it right here. Oh yeah, we actually, this is actually Ann Arbor uh, District Library's copy. Mm. I don't know how we ended up with it. I don't recall ever going to the Ann Arbor Library but I've done a lot of crazy things in, in drunken blackouts. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, uh, I've, I think I've gotten completely wasted and ended up at the Ann Arbor District Library and just binge bought DVDs too. Well, you know who always ends up at libraries when they've had too much to drink? Rip Torn. Getting back on track, what did you think of The Wolverine? I actually like this movie quite you, a bit. All you do is like Marvel movies and hate on DC. I do? Yeah. Like you, you loved Thor and Captain America and Iron Man 2. And you hated The Dark Knight Rises and The Dark Knight. Oh. Is Wolverine even a Marvel character? I don't know these things. I don't know comic books. I have no allegiance to any particular comic book brand. Um, but no, I like the movie a lot. Uh, it's is very restrained for a summer movie for the most part. It kind of turns to schlock at the end, but a lot of the movie is played, uh, it's serious, but not like Christopher Nolan, dark brooding Batman serious. It's kind of like a, a complete 180 from the last Wolverine movie, which I just recently saw in preparation for this discussion. I never saw it before, but it's kind of like going from Batman and Robin to Batman Begins in a way. Yeah. Let's, um, let's just cut right to the chase. This review is going to talk about The Wolverine and X-Men Origins Wolverine. And we're going to compare and contrast, not because movies should be compared and contrasted to one another, it's because The Wolverine is essentially a second attempt at making a, a Wolverine feature. Yeah. 
Uh, the first one was an origin story, obviously. This one is not an origin story. So it's not really a remake or a reboot or anything like that because obviously it stars, um, uh, what's his name? Theodore Miller? Uh, <laughs> who is the Australian man who's in these films? Hey everyone, my name's and please check out this brand new launch trailer from The Wolverine. Can you really not remember his name? I'm not gonna tell you. Don't look at the box. Hugh Jackman. I just look at his face. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, obviously, uh, this one stars Hugh Jackman in both, so it's the same character. It's not like the, uh, the Mark Ruffalo switcheroo. The X-Men Origins is still canon, I assume? Uh, I, there, there's things that don't uh, coincide with the other movies exactly, timeline, timeline wise. But. Yeah, but um, we're, we're going to compare these two. And uh, critically and overwhelmingly, I think people like this new one a lot better. People don't seem to like X Men Origins uh, Wolverine, but I'm in the minority in that. So yeah. I, I, will, um, I will take the counter position. <laughs> um, but as far as the Wolverine goes, I'm on the fence on it. Mm. Uh, I, I, I thought it was a well-made movie, uh, very straightforward. Um, the first action scene in it is like a, a shootout at a funeral, um, and it's pretty simple. The only part where it turns schlocky is when they're riding on the high-speed train. But even that, yeah, I guess we should say there's a sequence shortly after that shootout where, yeah, it's Wolverine and other guy fighting on top of a bullet train. <laughs> But even that, it wasn't like, I was thinking of the, the Matrix Reloaded when they're jumping around and flipping everywhere yeah. on top of the semi. And, and this one, it's, there's more of a, uh, uh, a logic to it. Like he, Wolverine, a lot of time, he's just sitting on top of the yeah. train, like waiting yeah. for the right moment. Um, there's more of a strategy to it. It's not yeah. just crazy flipping around and jumping and shooting. I, I, I found myself not caring all that much about what was happening on screen, and, and so I wasn't pulled into the movie. Technically fine, you know, performance-wise, but it's like, uh, and, and, and I think this film was based on a series of comic books, like it wasn't just a script that someone wrote. Right, it's based on an actual story from the comic Yeah, and, and when, I, when I saw the trailer, like I always think in terms of marketing and, and like a, a, a committee around a table, and, and people can say that we're wrong about this and they'll say it was in the comic book or whatever, but I see Wolverine and a, a 10 foot tall robotic samurai warrior and he's fighting him and I'm like, okay, robot Iron Man series has been successful. We have to shove that in here. And, well, we, and that's kind of where my brain goes. But. Well, that's what that ending felt like with the giant samurai robot monster thing. It reminded me of the end of Iron Man 1, yeah. where it's like in this, the, the, the samurai thing is made out of adamantium, right? And uh, so it's like the end of uh, Iron Man. Oh, now Iron Man has to fight a bigger Iron Man. Yeah. Now Wolverine has to fight a bigger adamantium monster. Your grandfather called me a Ronin. Samurai without a master. Who has no reason to live? Was he right? I don't know. I guess we'll get into spoilers here. Uh, if you haven't seen the movie by now, it's been out for like four weeks, so, you know, that's your own problem. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the old old uh, Japanese man, I, I see this is where like, I'm, I'm, I'm watching this movie and it's a simple movie made for children about a superhero. It's not, you know, I, I'm sitting there watching it and I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> And, and maybe that's just me, but um, the old man, uh, he wants Wolverine's powers, I guess to, to turn himself younger and heal himself. Right, because he's on his deathbed. Um, and then uh, the January Jones character, she, her name's Viper, I think, because um, Venom is a different character. Her name's Viper, she's a, she's a lizard lady. Um, and she also can steal your powers, I guess, kind of like Rogue, and she, uh, she sucks an orange glow into his mouth, and it's like, and he's like, bah. then after that, he loses his ability to heal. And then later on, we discover that he, the real reason he lost his ability to heal was because there was like a matrix spider thing attached to his heart. And then later, we discover that the old man lives inside of the robotic samurai suit, 
uh, I guess to keep him alive, he's uh, until he could get to Wolverine. Yes. And then he, in order to steal Wolverine's powers, he he had three drills conveniently placed on the robot samurai <laughs> that drilled into Wolverine's claw holes, and that sucked his power out of his claw holes. There's something oddly sexual in that imagery, too. Yeah, and, and so it's like, okay, well, Wolverine's power, natural mutant ability is, is rapid healing, and he also can grow bone claws out of his hands. The adamantium is not his natural power. He gets that mm -hmm. in a science experiment, which is, which is shown in this film. As well as in X-Men 2. Also in X-Men 2. X-Men Origins Wolverine is the reboot of X-Men Part 2. So Wolverine gets his bones covered in adamantium, and that makes his rickety bone claws turn into razor-sharp uh, claws for some reason. Somehow. I don't know how. But um, <laughs> so, so the old man lives inside of a suit, which happens to look like a samurai. It couldn't have just been a, like a suit. It had to have been a samurai suit made of adamantium for some reason. He didn't want to cover his own bones with adamantium. He just wanted to live inside of an adamantium suit. I, because he thought it was going to be temporary? Uh. But why build a suit? Why have it made out of adamantium unless he was expecting to fight the Wolverine? Mm. But anyways, the suit is equipped with three drills that are meant to drill into Wolverine's claw holes to seal his power. I thought the other girl stole his power by sucking orange glows into his mouth. <laughs> But, instead, but maybe that orange glow was a way of shooting the robot in, into his heart. I, I, that's what I took yeah. as happening. So really, the old man, he just wanted to be have immortality. And he just wanted uh, Logan's healing abilities. Yeah. So what does the adamantium have anything to do with anything? X-Men. Schnicket. What they did to me. What I am. Can't be undone. Wolverine goes over there, right? And he wants to help the old man or wants to say goodbye to him, right? That's fine. And then he kind of falls for his granddaughter. Uh, and the only reason he falls for her is because she was mistreated and then she runs away. Yes. And, and then they immediately care about each other. And then he immediately cares about her instead of just going, oh, fuck this, I'm going home. Like, yeah. That's what Wolverine would have done. But he's running after her and he's trying to protect her and then. Um, and then it's like they fall in love, and and I, I just I just don't I don't get his motivation. I don't care really about this whole little adventure. Mm. So it, see, it, I, I liked the I liked the setting. I liked the action and sparse use of action, and that's the stuff I really liked. Yeah. And I like Hugh Jackman as as Wolverine. So for me, sure. that's what carried the movie. Some movies you get hung up on it. Some movies are about the plot. This really wasn't. No, but it wasn't about anything else either. It was about that, Wolverine. That's the thing, and that and that's that's where I I like X Men Origins better. Oh my god! Now now, now a little a little uh, introduction on X Men Origins. <laughs> um, this is this is this might be. I don't know. This is this is just a terrible film. Spoilers. It's crap. <laughs> I don't know what happened after uh, Brian Singer departed. Uh, you, have, you have the original X-Men trilogy, right? Mm -hmm. X-Men 1 is, is, is a fine little film. It's what kicked off the superhero movies. 99, that's yeah. how old it is. Yeah. It's almost 20 fucking years old. Holy shit. Um, the X-Men, the first X-Men movie, little cheap, low budget thing. The, the most exciting thing that happens is, is Wolverine fights Sabretooth on top of the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm and then the, the, someone is tied up somewhere. It's so cheap, but it's like, okay, this is good. The second one, and, and so it's almost, it's very comparable to the Star Wars trilogy. Oh, sure. You, you got the first one, a little low budget, not low budget comparatively speaking, but a little a smaller budget action movie. It does well, um, it sets the stage. X-Men 2 is the Empire Strikes Back of that series. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very well done. It's, yes. it's classy, it's restrained, it's, it's elegant, it's, it's exciting, um, it's, it's the best of the three. The third film, not so good. It has all the action you could possibly want with a mutant action movie, but it, it, it's the uh, Return of the Jedi of the three. It's trying to throw too many things in there. Yeah, and then, Characters get lost in the shuffle, character yeah. motivations get lost in the shuffle. And that's when they got the rented director, uh, Brett Ratner. Oh, good old Brett Ratner. Yeah, because Brian Singer wanted to go off and make an even worse movie called <laughs> Superman Returns. <laughs> And he took Cyclops with him. So then after that, everything went downhill. Mm. Uh, these movies started to have the production value of like a television show. 
this, uh, this movie and um, whatever, X-Men First Class, yeah. the, some of the visual effects in these movies are shockingly bad. I had not seen X-Men Origins Wolverine until uh, preparing this discussion, and I was amazed. I, I would say I liked this movie too in the sense that I thought it was terrible and amusing. Uh, the effects in this are just awful. There's a CG uh, Patrick Stewart that shows up, and then all the little mutants run towards him, and the shot of them running away from the camera is just the worst thing I've seen in a major release. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then he, his mouth moves, and it, and it looks like uh, Mr. Clean. <laughs> like, like uh, it's a, whoa! <laughs> it's so bad looking. And then there's also the, uh, the famous claw scene. This was shocking too. The, the scene in the bathroom, his claws come out and it looks like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Right, yeah. There's one shot where the claws come out, which is like, okay, that's a computer graphic that needs to be because they're not gonna come out that fast with a physical prop. But then the next couple of shots are him just kind of standing there holding them. It's like, don't you have the prop ones? And they're even in frame. Yeah. Like how hard would it be just to get a physical prop and put it in frame, but they, and, they, and it looks like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And then the, the, I think, the worst shot in the movie is um, uh, Gambit goes up on a fire escape and Logan's trying oh, to yeah. get him. And then- It's like a Looney Tunes. Yeah, it's like a Looney Tunes. <laughs> he's chopping at the at the, at the the ladder and it's like cut, cutting apart. He's like <laughs> it, It's awful. Um, and then of course, um, Will I Am is a character in this for some reason. I'm, I'm pretty sure they cast Will I Am because of his great acting abilities. We hunted our own kind, Logan. He's he's just fantastic in that movie. Yeah. There's a special place in hell for the things we did. He had to change his name to Will I Act after this. Compare these two on entertainment value, Jay. Okay. Begin. Uh, well, uh, it's, this movie is entertaining in the bad movie sense, the laughing at the cheap effects and the bad acting, uh, and the Wolverine is more entertaining as a real movie. Even if the script isn't the greatest, I liked the action in it a lot more than the action in this. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not speaking of the script in terms of, wow, well, like, why did this character do this? This doesn't make sense. I, th I think I just I was just a little disinterested in the Wolverine because it was just it was mainly motivation. Okay. It's like w what's happening and why. And this it's like okay, Wolverine he joins a band of uh, mercenaries doing some illegal things in the beginning. He kind of learns of his morality there. Uh, he goes into hiding. He falls in love with this lady. And then there's this like rivalry with uh, him and Sabretooth. And then th it's like they go they go to. New Orleans, they go here, there's a lot more mutant characters in it. Go, now. It's just, there's more variety, and I get his motivation mm. in this a lot more. It's, it's very clear, he, yeah. it's, it's revenge-based, um, but then there's a little more going on. Possibly the worst executed movie <laughs> in the world. Now, I thought every single aspect of this film was just incredible. I give this movie an A plus. Well, they're going for two completely different things. This is going for uh, over the top action, comic booky, you know, goofiness, and the other one seems to be more of a. It, it fails in some respects because you mentioned the lack of understanding of the motivation of the character, but it really seems to be going for a stripped down, sort of simplistic. Uh, I, I like how simple the story is. That it's just Wolverine. He goes to Japan. These things happen to him. The end. Uh, it's not like a globe-trotting adventure or anything like that. No, but uh, I, I would like that. I would like that if the plot was a little more complicated. Mm. I've always wanted to see like, I, I think it was after the Batman movies started up, um, where it was like, you know, Tim Burton's first Batman movie, and then and it's like once like George Clooney and what's his face took over Val Kilmer, and it's like. Like, can't we just have like a good Batman story? It's always, it always becomes villain of the week. Like, he's got to fight the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, and like, I want to see Batman dealing with like the seedy underworld of crime and corruption without a giant robot at the end. Well, that's what makes X-Men 2 so great. Yeah. That, that movie, it's not about some sort of big villain they have to fight at the end. It's just about these two sort of opposing ideologies. So you have the two yeah. main characters that have different views on everything. And that's where the drama and the tension comes from. 
uh, when they said something about the Japanese gang, Yam Yamoto, Yahiro, Yaku, Yakuza. Yakuza. Yakuza is, that... is a thing. That's very insensitive. It is it? Yeah. Yakuza is oh. the, the Japanese crime lords. Japanese okay. gang. Well, well, even better. Like when they, they mentioned Yakuza, like the Japanese underworld, crime lords, or whatever. It's like, oh, cool. A, a, a super intricate plot about betrayal and murder. And, and then it's just a guy wants to get in a robot suit. <laughs> that, that, that's the problem. That was a problem yeah, for me. Yeah. It's, you're going to make a movie about Wolverine going to Japan, getting entangled with the Japanese underworld. Make it cool. There are two extremes. This one ends with um, Wolverine and Sabretooth fighting Deadpool. Back to back. But anyway, they fight him, and, and, and they're fighting him on top of a, uh, the, the, the tower <laughs> of a nuclear reactor. Yeah. And it's like they don't end up there. Wolverine just goes up there. Yeah, they just got to do it. He's cl like, what is he doing? He goes, he goes, let's see if you could fight me up here. <laughs> let's see you dance up here. Like, why'd you go up there? You have the horrible disadvantage. <laughs> Like, you know, this guy can disappear and reappear in places. Yeah. Don't don't go up there. <laughs> Just fight him out in the open. But it's but it's like it's like that silliness I liked. Uh, if it wasn't the bad visual effects is what makes this movie just kind of look dumb and corny. It's too late. No! Uh, in both Origins and the, the Wolverine, he doesn't say a lot of smart-ass things. He doesn't really have anyone to play off that sort of sarcastic uh, quality that he has as part of an ensemble, which is what makes him better in those X-Men movies. That, that's my biggest problem, is that I don't mind watching a singular Wolverine adventure, but Wolverine is, when he's forced to work with a team, especially one that Cyclops is in charge of. Right. Uh, Wolverine is the outcast, he's the standalone, he's the guy that does things by himself. He says, bub, fuck you, I'm gonna go off and do this. So when the movie revolves around him, it makes him a little less interesting because he has to make those heroic character choices that, that he wouldn't normally do, yeah. I guess. So there's no, there's no interplay, there's no tension, there's no butting heads. It's just Wolverine. Let's talk about the best part of the Wolverine. It was not in the film. It was oh the post yeah, the post-credit scene was far more exciting than anything in the movie. Spoilers. Wolverine is leaving Japan in the airport, and all, all the metal objects start floating around, and you know what that means. This is when you get goosebumps. Yeah, the Magneto is there. They pulled him out of hospice, I think, and propped him up. On, on something. <laughs> so Sir Ian McKellen, at a ripe old age, 112, is back as Magneto. And um, and then he's like, oh, Logan, I see you're at the airport. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> you know, he's holding Wolverine in place because he can uh, hold his adamantium in place. And then Wolverine says, what do you want, bub? And then all the people freeze and, um, you're just like, oh no, we know what that means. Oh snap. It's Professor X. And then Patrick Stewart's back as Professor X somehow. He's actually in a wheelchair in real life now. Yeah, now he's not a, a computer generated character, but uh, uh, Wolverine rightfully asks, how is this possible? How is this possible? You were uh, turned into fucking dust <laughs> in, in x -Men. And then he says, uh, don't worry about it. Well, let me ask you this. Why was that scene far more exciting than anything else in the Wolverine? Is it because those two characters are way more interesting than the Wolverine? Yes. Okay. The, those two characters... <laughs> Wolverine is, is a piece of a larger puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's like the Boba Fett movie. Yeah. You know, it, Wolverine is a little more interesting than Boba Fett, obviously, but uh, he's that cool character that, that should be used here and there as, a, you know, and then you, when you get too much into him, it kind of ruins the, the mystique of him, not an X-Men pun. Um, so, so it's like, okay, I'm done with Wolverine. Yes, he's a tormented character. Yes, he has nightmares. Uh, he, ah, done, yeah. done. 
Um, I'm more interested in learning more about Cyclops now. <laughs> um, all three X-Men films were about Wolverine, and he has two singular films. Yeah. Now, uh, Brian Singer's back. He, he failed at making a Superman film. Now he's back to make X-Men Days of Future Past, which is a comic book series based on an alternate future. It's gonna be exciting as long as the whole movie isn't just about Wolverine again. Yeah, yeah. Which it will be. So Jay, which movie is the best of the worst? <laughs> uh, well, this movie is the worst. Uh, it was entertaining and how bad it was, but as, as far as a real movie goes, I enjoyed the Wolverine more. I don't need to see any more Wolverine movies, certainly. Uh, but uh, if you want to see a, a more straightforward, serious representation of the Wolverine, Wolverine goes to Japan, then that's what the new Wolverine is. Until it turns to garbage at the end. I want to see Wolverine goes to Jamaica. They were going to plan a Beetlejuice sequel, where Beetlejuice goes to Hawaii. So, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine versus the X... Versus the Wolverine. What are these movies? Not to repeat myself too much, sure. but uh, I, I gotta go with apples and oranges here. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. This has a little more visual variety, a lot more characters that that uh, that we all know and love. There's a, a cameo by young Cyclops. A cartoon Professor Xavier shows up, uh, and uh, you see. I think you see What's-Her-Face, the January Jones character. I, I think, yeah, the White Queen is in this. Even though it doesn't line up with the timeline of First Class it at all. It doesn't, it doesn't. But um, uh, the, the Blob, the Gambit, which is um, which is a whole other series that uh, they could exploit for cash. Sure, why not? Uh, Gambit is a pretty popular character. I don't know if they'll get uh, Taylor Kitsch to, to be him again. The guy who plays Gambit in this is the guy who was in such hit films as... John Carter of Mars, and Battleship. Um, so his career is over. But, you know, you see him in this, and that's sort of a draw for comic book fans, too. Uh, lots of is it a draw if they ruin these characters, though? No, I don't think the Gambit character is ruined. Um, it, it is silly that he shows up at the end with a little airplane <laughs> and saves the day. Um, <laughs> oh, no, he, dry, he flies Wolverine to, to the location by with an airplane he just happens to have. Yes, and then a little cartoon Wolverine falls out of the plane and tumbles across the water. They're real tough choices, Jay. They're real tough choices. I may have to go with this, though. Wow. No wonder the Ann Arbor District Library didn't want their DVD back. Actually, I checked it out six years ago. Hello? I owe what in late fees? Rudavari, Samurai, Sayonara. So what social injustice do you think the new X-Men movie will be an analogy for? Hmm. The, the we are the 99%? Hmm. Gay marriage? Possibly, sure. Gun control? Hmm, that's a good one, yeah. Abortion? Well, whatever it is, I'm sure they'll handle it in the most heavy-handed, ham-fisted way possible. I'm sure it will be. Oh. Lightning fast VCR repair. We take forever to fix your VCR. How can I help you? I see. I see. Thank you. Who was that? That was Mr. Plinkett. And you'll never guess where he's at.